Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Art of Transformation. I'm your host, Mark Schaff, and today I got to have a conversation with Dory Fern. I'm going to read from her bio here that Dory is a lifelong New Yorker. She's a joyful home cook, a marketer, and story shaper. She coaches creative people ready to stop feeling bad about how they look, what they eat, who they are, so they can be confident in their skin and ripe for transformative change at any age. Now, Dory and I got into a little bit about who that might be. So if you're listening, have an ear out. Maybe it's you. Dory is a fantastic coach, a fantastic human, and a fellow Brooklynite. So listen, and I'll see you on the other side. Hey, Dory, welcome to the show. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. Well, nice to see you. We uh, we got to meet at a recent coaching event for the International Coach Federation. Our summer, our summer, what do you, I don't forget what it was called, like the summer fest, summer something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't remember what it was called, but it was my first it was my first coaching event of the sort, like ICF. Yeah. International Coaching Federation event. So Yeah. I'm and I think it's funny that we immediately were just like, you. Well that's you know, that's what I was gonna say is that, you know, uh I sort of, you know, cringe like probably most people when they're like, come to this networking event. You're like, network. Like, okay, we're going to sit around and talk exactly. about like, what do you do and all this stuff. Exactly. But we we got right into it. We had a really wide-ranging conversation, which is part of why I invited you to the podcast. We had such a good talk. I'm like, we should have recorded this. But do you remember where how it started? I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I don't. It was what I was wearing. It was my oh, very brightly colored top. Yeah, and then yeah. I also noticed that you had like kind of crazy pants on. So like we noticed <laughs> where the aesthetic... We just knew in the crowd we were kind of standing out in terms of how we were dressed. <laughs> that, so. That's my people right there. Yeah. yeah. No, I remember that top. It was, oh, God, it, it was like this vintage, like rainbow, but not like all the colors in the rainbow. And it was, mm -hmm. oh, it was great. Um, and you said you'd gotten it that day, I think, or something. No, I no, I didn't get it that day. No, I got it. I did get it at a thrift store, though. Okay. So I paid like $5 for it. I had this image of you like going to the event and grabbing it. I've well, done that, but. Yeah, no. well, welcome to the show. And, Thank you. Uh, you know, I'd love to start with you just sharing a little bit about and, you know, and I'm going to ask this knowing a little bit that, you know, the answer isn't isn't all right there. And that's what and I think that's one of the things we can talk about are, are, you know, who are the kinds of people that you serve or are looking to serve, you know, and what are some of the issues that they have that you specifically help with? Right. Um, yes. And thank you for teeing it up that way. Uh, yeah, I, I guess before as in a way to, to a little background before I get right to the answer to that question is that I have became a coach a little over a year ago while I was at a full-time job, not coaching. And I never really thought about that part of it. Like what, what exactly am I here to do? And I, I had taken a sabbatical myself prior to becoming a coach, prior to be deciding that I wanted to become a coach, a year-long sabbatical. Yeah. And I knew that that experience, along with some other experiences I've had with change in my life, was key to what I would be doing, how I would be serving people. Mm. And what when this job that I was at ended, I have been using this time to really go deep with myself and figure out what exactly is the answer to that question? And I had a bit of a breakthrough last week be in the ability to articulate it. So I, I think my people are, you know, I know my people are ready to make it a big change. They have decided they are going to leave their job and take a sabbatical. They mm -hmm. are going to change their career. They are going to stop dieting for good. They want to get their they want to get their, you know, health in good standing. They want to stop listening to all the chatter about how you're supposed to age and not age, but they don't exactly know what's next. Mm. They don't, they, they, I am a coach for someone who wants guidance through that process of change. And yeah, so so that is that is where I'm at. I am for the people who who <laughs> who need the the hand to hold to help guide them. The people them who are to, ready, you said. The people who, the are, people ready, who are ready. The people who are ready. I'm curious about that, and and going back to something you said, um, you said that 
And it's funny that you say you, you had this sabbatical, uh, you know, the jo job ended and you had some time. And I can think of a number of clients that I've worked with. I can think of my own story, which I think people on this podcast have heard about how that time can be used to not just find the next thing, but find, you know, your next chapter, your next story, like something, something that's not just a lateral, like I need another, whatever I was doing before, but what would somebody create from this place? So I'm, I'm curious about what specifically, uh, as much as you can say about, about how you quote unquote went deep on these ideas of, you know, what, what it is that you're really here and what it is that you're supposed to do. You know, I think it actually came clear in a message I got this last week from someone who found an article that I had written about the planning necessary to take a break. Like people mm. talk about, you know, you, you take a break and live your purpose and all the, we talked a lot about this at the, <laughs> that gathering about the platitudes of self-improvement mm. that yes, yes. create this enormous gap for people between knowing they need something and understanding how they themselves are going to get it done. And that article that I wrote was about the planning that I did to make that break happen. The financial financials of, of how what I had to do to have the money to take that break that I wanted. And, uh, you know, those steps that I took. And this woman had not even interacted with this post. She just saw that article from that post and was like, I need to talk to that woman because she today is her last day at a job. And she just she's feel, she's really psyched. She has like two to three months of this sabbatical, but she doesn't really know what she's doing next. She knows that she needed to take a break. So she has this feeling of like, you know, excitement. But also there's a lot at stake here. And she, when she reached out to me, she was eager to talk and it really was, it reaffirmed, you know, just getting the message kind of said that this is it. It's in that, it's in that process. It's in, it's in the forming the path because especially for those of us who come from corporate backgrounds, I'm certainly a creative person, but I'm very brain led or have been very brain led in a lot of the decision making. and. The thing I learned during my sabbatical is that the exercising intuition, I mean, listening to your gut, that kind of thing is just as important as exercising any muscles that you have. This is what coaching is for, right? Like we help guide people, but we believe that they have the answers. It's about supporting them to get, uh, you know, through the uh, through and around the blocks and the 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 barriers that are are set up from external reasons and internal reasons that prevent them from seeing from believing in that gut from listening to what right. their intuition is telling them right. and then you know we talk about having skills and having resources and all of that is really important but you can't just get a bunch of technology and think you're going to succeed because you have a lot of tools. You have to know what to do with them. You just have a certain clarity about that seed mm. that then mm. to grow it, what do you need to water? How much do you water it? Where do you, you know, what's the amount of sunlight it needs? What are the other resources that are necessary to, to yeah. really bring it to life? Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. It brings to mind there, there was a study that, uh, if I can, remember to find it and link it, I will. But there was a study that was done at Harvard around uh, decision making, specifically in the corporate environment. And while we would love to think that, you know, decisions are brain led, that they're based on numbers, they're based on data, um, what they found, and I, I don't remember the details of the study, is that almost all, if not all, decisions are in whole or in part, emotionally. Emotional. No, in my marketing job, we literally had, is part of our brand strategy workshops. Our, we had these North Star brand strategy workshops, and it was something like 94% of decisions yeah. Yeah. are heart-led. Right. And there's, and there's like, I, I just want to... And this was in, this was, you know, pharma, where we're talking about healthcare professionals right. and people be, who are very, very number, intellectual. Right? Yeah. Right. And I think that's where people get a little bit stuck is that they feel like 
no, there should be like a clear answer. And the, and, and the truth is in the work that I think we both do, there's often not a clear answer or a right answer. And it's one of the things that kind of sticks people. I, I'm also working with someone who's actually just gave notice. And, you know, we're in the process of designing, you know, that, that time off to be what? To be productive, to be, you know, grounding, to be healthy, to be, you know, uh, to improve relationships. You know, it's not just one thing that we do. There's, there's a real, I can, I, I, cause I've left various jobs at various times in, in my long and varied career. There is a real fear of like, what if I don't make the best use of this time? Or what if I panic and yeah. take a, you know, just take, take, take the wrong, take the wrong job. I'm curious what you might even say to someone who, you know, who, who says, you know, I'm leaving my job or I want to leave my job. And it's just, it's just so, it's just so unclear. And I have this feeling of, of panic and fear. And I'm afraid that I might make a decision that's based on that. Where would you coach somebody like that to kind mm. of start to get themselves in the right frame of mind to have a truly fulfilling break? That's a really good question. The would probably start with a bit of a with some gut work <laughs> mm. so to speak like i would probably have them close their eyes and take a deep breath and really imagine it, well number 1 seeing who they are or who they imagine themselves to be so that the steps that they're taking are towards something that they can see this is work that i have been doing myself as well. Um, I, it's it's hard yeah. to. I'm not like a big dreamer by nature. I, I feel like a little embarrassed as a coach saying that, but it's hard work for me to think about who is the dream me, who is who am I at my most fulfilled, and what does that look like, and paint that picture because whether it's in it for a three month break or for the rest of one's life. Like if you don't have that kind of end in mind, how do you know what are the right steps to take to get there? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we talk, I think we might've talked about that. What I did that I sort of did something similar kind of inadvertently when I quit smoking weed. Did I talk about that? I, um, I mean, we may have talked about it, but uh, we have yeah, not, we have not, not talked last, about it here. So in let's last, in the last let me, fifteen minutes, we have no, correct, correct, so correct. Let's, let's go there. Well, <laughs> so a couple of years ago, I just had decided that I, after a lifetime of being a very regular uh, marijuana smoker, that it just was not feeling good for me. I've never been like a big user, but just it just my body wasn't metabolizing. I wasn't really enjoying it. So the first time I tried to quit was during the pandemic and that worked until I was around all my friends who smoke weed and then like, oh, I'll just have a little bit here and there. And then it wasn't good. And I was just like, I, this, no, I'm done. I am done. But what does that look like? Because I'm not going to give up my friends. I just like, how am I going to do this? And sure, you know, immediately you go to, well, you just need willpower. But for whatever reason, I said to myself, okay, so now you're just that person in the friend group who doesn't smoke. Like we all know somebody in our group who doesn't drink or doesn't smoke or is just like different or like whatever. Yeah. So, so I just had to see myself that way and, and claim mm. that. And then taking the steps and not smoking, it was a whole different process. I mean, I'm a normal human being. I've gone through rounds of you know, trying to do things and and trying to have the willpower, trying to have the discipline, and then trying, trying, trying. And I'm just finding over and again that the more you try to get back to where we started this without mm -hmm. seeing the end in mind, the harder you're making it for yourself. Yeah, and that comes back to this. I think that's, that brings us also back to this idea of dreaming and what you said at the very beginning about about getting support, something that I, you know, absolutely do not believe is this myth that that I think is thankfully kind of no no longer as prevalent. But this myth that things like therapy or coaching are for people who have problems or aren't, you know, sort of, you know, are not 
as if anybody doesn't have problems. First of yeah. all, and, yeah. and, and, you know, and second of all, you know, it's funny because when I got, when, when I decided, when I did, I was actually, uh, I applied to and, and got into school for uh, art therapy and I was really pulled towards coaching. And I just remember having this conversation with my wife about like, you know, is this just some sort of like ego? Th- like, is this a real thing? Like, you know, like, do, like, what does the world think about this? She moves in important circles and was like, oh, every, everybody, everybody has a coach, like every executive, every leader, right. every, you know, all kinds of people. In fact, the, the, the point is, if you're at a point like you, you know, I imagine in your story, like, you know, you're a professional doing well, you know, you could probably have continued doing that. There was nothing wrong. And there was an area where you were like, I'd like this to be a little bit not better, but just more aligned with who I am. And getting back to what you said you do with people, you know, really getting people the support that they need to to remember that as they go through a process that may or may not be difficult. So much change is obviously, but I, but I but I like how this kind of ties ties it all ties it all together. Reminds me, you, of some- you have to own the process too, and it doesn't mean you have to do it by yourself. But you do have to figure out what really is working for you. That is kind of when we talk about things like authenticity, Mm -hmm. that overused word. It's getting to that part of yourself, that kernel of yourself that is really true and valuable and that connects. It's a practice to just show up for that and that it's in the connections with other people extending who you are into the larger community or universe around you that makes authenticity truly valuable. Yeah, actually, it's a, it's kind of a good segue. Speaking of doing this work in community, doing it with other people, connecting with other people, you have a podcast yeah. where you do some of this work. Before I ask a lot of questions, can you tell us a little bit about what you do uh, on that and tell us the name and, and what you do on yeah. that podcast? Yeah, my podcast is called uh, Life Changing with Dory Fern, and I did a season of it. Uh, It's been a couple of years. I did it to chronicle this sabbatical that I took that ended in uh, just early fall 2022. And it was my own little podcast. It took me quite a time. I knew I wanted to do a podcast for whatever reasons. I hadn't done one. I knew I wanted to do one. I like to talk. And as a creative person, like I've always wanted one. Anyway, so I, it took me quite a while to figure out, was I going to interview life changers? What was I going to do? But then I just realized, no, I really want this experience of the messiness of change. I want to, I want to share that. I want to chronicle that. I want to tell stories about that. And then it ended and I, you know, I kind of was like, I think I'm done. I'm not sure that I, I don't, I just didn't know what to do after that. I didn't have a clear picture of where I wanted to go with it because I was kind of sick of talking about myself, frankly, by that point. But I wasn't really sure where the podcast really worked. And then when this job, uh, this last job that I was at ended, which I was grateful for because it was going to give me time to really shape this coaching business. It dawned on me that I really wanted to talk on my podcast to the incredibly diverse group of people in my world, that I wanted to connect with them, that I wanted to go deep with them. I'm always really interested in like the deepest kind of the puzzle of who we all are as people just fascinates me. And then, you know, I kind of see people like Matrushka dolls, like Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. The Russian Matryoshka dolls? Like you are this in the center is just you. You are that only person who isn't the center. But then you have your family and your, um, you know, your media family and maybe your larger family and your community and then your multiple communities and the world around you. And in all of those ways, who are you? You know, how does all of that, again, connect with that singular person connect with the larger world. And so I have done an, quite a number of interviews, but I knew I needed someone to help me with the production. And I found a producer. She had produced her podcast mm. back in the day. And so what was kind of amazing is she suggested kind of, I, they were very long interviews. I was like, I think they're too long, but, and I'm not exactly sure what holds them all together. And she listened to them and 
she suggested a way forward using narration, using my voice to kind of pull the different pieces, chapters of this together. And so this is what we're working on. So we're putting this together. And at one point, uh, she was giving me this feedback and just telling me what she liked about about what we were doing and wh- how she thought it could be better. And I just I just started getting teary because mm. nobody had given me the kind of like feedback on my work, just mm. my like personal creative work. So you were I, getting, in a way, the kind of support that we've yeah, been talking about this whole exactly, time. exactly, and, that, and it was and, so and when powerful. We did that things start to become clear. Yes, things become clear. And also just like, you know, I'm someone who does a lot of like giving to other people in an almost maybe aggressive way sometimes. (laughs) And I'm not amazing at at being soft, I guess. Got it. You know, there's, uh, I'm always sort of listening for like, what, what can someone, if, if you're listening to this, like, what can they sort of take from this? And there's, there is a thread in the stories that you've told so far that I'm seeing, you know, which is about that support and I, something that I believe about creativity and that I believe about transformation. And I, I could talk for hours about this, but it, it is not created in a vacuum. It is done in community. It is, it is done in collaboration. I haven't done a, I can't think of, I mean, you know, I, I have a, a background career as an artist. A lot of that was done here or in a studio on my own, but on my own is in the context of being in a family of being in community of artists and being a community of non-artists who are also incredibly creative being in a community now of coaches all of these things are there to help inform guide and support my my work and so you know when i'm thinking like if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking about a, a career transformation you know something that i'm taking from this is that it's it's okay and and in fact it should be totally normalized to get some kind of support now that could be, you know, coming to you, hiring you as a coach. I also think, it, you know, if you have kind of the right friends who can have a, a, a conversation that's safe and non-judgmental and supportive, that's good too. But I'm just the 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 nut for me is really about, you know, I think a lot of the people who do these career transformations, they will do them. You know, they they're, they're going to do them. It's going to be fine, and it will go faster and probably better with that support, that sounding board to generate a better set of ideas and that better set of ideas might be about not your authentic self that's not the way i think about it but more Mm -hmm. of like who you want to become and how do you create your aligned self how do you create the decisions the habits that align with that idea of who you want to be because if you can do those things now then you're basically as james clear would say you're sort of casting votes every day for the person you want to be right yes exactly and And also just one additional point in that, I think for a lot of people who are in that moment, they think a lot more about the external factors of their life, like that have happened to them as being more influential than they need to be in their life. Mm. There are like really, truly important (laughs) external factors, all of that, (laughs) you like money and privilege of all sorts. And again, family and and those kinds of things, very real, but oftentimes, especially around work that we need to do, that we can do, not that we need to do, that we can do for ourselves, that we are, should feel empowered to do where that, those external factors don't matter anymore. They're, mm. they're not a barrier to getting what you want, if mm. that makes sense. If you were to say, as a, maybe this is a final question, uh, we'll see where it goes. And <laughs> we'll, we'll edit it later if it's not. But if, um, if you were to say in your experience, in, in, you know, from your own experience and uh, you know, from your years of, of, of working in corporate and, and coaching people, and I'm, I'm, I, I know you a little bit, I know that, You've always been kind of like doing a little bit of that along the way. It's, I know, you know, it's just part of the job, but what other than external factors, you mentioned, obviously, you know, finance, time, obligation, like these are all things that are external and we need to make a plan for because, you know, we have to pay rent and taxes or whatever else. But if there was one, if you could point to one, it doesn't have to be like the most important, but what is one common internal obstacle that gets in the way? of somebody as they're going through that kind of 
transition? Um, overthinking. <laughs> say more about that. Or say um, less about it. Maybe we should say less about it. <laughs> <laughs> you are always thinking and machinating like about what is happening to you and what you don't want to happen, you know, and then you get in this mode of of thinking about things before they need to be thought about. Like you was talking to a woman about a job interview that she hasn't even set up yet. And she's worried because she's consulting on this other thing, but then she's not really sure. Does she really, that's, it's a little more speculative, but she's kind of into it. And she's w- so worried about this, that maybe she'll get offered this job. And then she would then disappoint these other people. So she's anyway, all to say she's created this entire narrative in her head about a problem that doesn't exist. And we do that all the time. And I think the more you are in these kinds of kind of conventional constructs, conventional multi-layered constructs, and your job is to think, you just get real. And some of us are just in our heads a lot. And I think, you know, learning how to just stop and pause and take a deep breath and just let it go and ask yourself, as if you were coaching yourself, do I need to be thinking about those things now? Or if those things happened, what might I do? Or if I don't know them now, what are ways in which I can get the answers I need to these things? Mm -hmm. And then just Or just like let it go for the time being. Like be okay with there's always going to be things in life that you don't know until you know them. But it doesn't have to be a source of stress. So anyway, the overthinking is really, um, I think, one the number one reason why people get tied up in narratives that aren't helping them in any way and are only keeping them back. Yeah. What you said makes me think about how we we can, and, and I've seen it too, you know, overthinking, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm wondering if it's true, but, um, <laughs> this is how, this is how we do, right? Yep. But, uh, but I find that so much of overthinking, as you said, you know, kind of comes from m- maybe something as simple as a lack of, you know, a lack of information. You know, I can think about a few things right now that are kind of on my mind and bothering me that I'm thinking through. I remember talking to my wife earlier. She's like, there's nothing to really do right now. And you don't have the information and the way you can get the information is this. So why don't you just wait until you have the information before you start the huge decision tree of what ifs based on a bunch of things that, you know, not all of them are going to be true. Right. So I like that. I like that um, encouragement, that call, that call to action of inaction, which is, which yeah. is not to say, which is not to say like, don't do anything ever, but to say, Really, as you're, you know, if you find yourself looping on one of these decisions, first of all, support of a coach, always a good thing, but taking that space and coming back to it and seeing what's really, you know, what's really, what's the real issue? What's really important? Maybe it's, I need some information. Could be something as simple as that. Yeah. And, And if anybody's ever meditated at all, poorly or well, or it, that idea of, let things in and kind of breathe them away. Just, you know, you have to kind of come back. They will. It, yeah. And also have confidence that, you know, you can find answers you need to find <laughs> and you are competent. If it's important, it will come and you may need to take steps to get the answers. You may need to just let go of that expectation of when the answer is going to come, but trust that you can figure out which of Mm. whether you want to be in a state of panic about it or whether you want to be just more open and and not freaking out and just happier and more satisfied. And and those are, it's possible. It's a practice, but it's possible. Well, if people are listening and feel ready to find some answers and be in that practice, what is the best way for them to find out more about you? We will, of course, post links if you're watching yeah. on any of the platforms, we'll post those links, but let us know what, what are what are one or two good ways that people can find you. 
Yeah, well, probably the best way is to find me on my website. My name is Dory Fern, D-O-R-I-F-E-R-N, and that is my website, DoryFern.com. I'm Dory Fern on most social media. LinkedIn, you can always connect with me there. You can connect with me on Instagram. I don't have the most exciting page, but you know, you can find me. I'm very easy to find. Uh, and you can schedule a 30 minute call just to talk. Great. No, you know, very just, generous. Yeah. Just, you know, just let's get on a call. Uh, no, no strings attached. And, uh, you know, I would love to meet anybody who's curious. Yeah. And I can, I can vouch, uh, you know, if you, if you book a call with Dory, there's not going to be like a high pressure, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's an exploration. Am I right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So take that first step, give Dory, you know, book a call with Dory. And uh, for, for everybody who's listening, thank you. Our next episode, I can't tell you anything about um, in part because I've totally forgotten who I'm talking to next. Dory. <laughs> we're, we're about transparency here, right? So, uh, we are about transparency. I, I don't always have it all together, but I'm glad that we got it together to talk today. And I really appreciate Same. the time and the wisdom that you brought today. I'm looking forward to releasing the episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks again for listening to The Art of Transformation. If you like this episode, please do all the things. Share it with a friend. Follow on your favorite podcasting service. If you really liked it, please do rate it leave a comment, leave a review, share it. All of those things really help me and help me defeat the algorithm. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.